Welcome back into my studio. Um, another episode of the show. Uh, as I briefly mentioned, we're in the middle of the redesign of the innovation studio here, but uh, continuing to work to crank out episodes for you. So today's topic is about mastering the role of the chief innovation officer, sometimes referred to as the CINO. Uh, now, CINO, the chief innovation officer role, is a relatively new role designed to bring innovation to the seat at the sea level, being on par with the chief financial officer and the chief HR person and chief marketing officer, elevating innovation to that level. Now, it's a relatively new role. Uh, its mission, really, when you think about why a CEO or a board would want this role, it's about being a catalyst for transformation and progress for the organization. However, it's a relatively new role, and what this means is, is the role is typically marked with a very brief tenure. The average tenure for a chief innovation officer is less than two years. Very similar to what the chief information officer role was when it was initially formed two decades ago. But the key here is the importance of understanding eyes wide open of the challenges and the opportunities. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, role, I'm going to give you a, a view of a role comparison to other C-level roles. Also, what's the reasons for the high turnover for uh, chief innovation officers? What are some strategies for success in this role? Um, fostering a culture of innovation, kind of an underpinning for stepping into this role. The importance of effective communication. And key here is, is adaptability and resiliency. This is a new role. And in many cases, if you're taking on a CINO role within an organization, you're going to be that first person in that role, which means you're defining what is the criteria for your success and people who come behind you. So let's talk about it as a, as a role comparison. Um, in this case, I'll talk about CIOs. I was, I've been a chief information officer at publicly traded telecommunication companies. Um, effectively, I was the CINO at HP. In addition to my CTO role at Hewlett Packard, I also ran and created and launched and ran the Innovation Program Office. Um, and now I'm a CEO at a lab. So 30 years of experience. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the comparison. The best comparison is the CIO. And the, the CIO two decades ago faced the similar 10-year challenges. The average 10-year for an early CIO was about 18 months. Um, however, as the role of the CIO has become a little bit better understood and uh, people have built up experiences to be ready to step in, given the scope and responsibility, the CIO tenure now is aligned with the average tenure for a CEO or a CFO, which is about five years. Um, now, there are lessons to be learned from this evolution. And that is understanding, really, the scope and role and getting alignment across the organization. And we're going to talk more about that here in a second. But let's talk a little bit about the here and now. What are the reasons for the high turnover that chief innovation officers are experiencing today? Well, one is, is unrealistic expectations and lack of resources. People, time, and money. Um, unrealistic expectations, it's a new role. The CEO's not even sure what the role is. They see other people in their industry appointing and hiring chief innovation officers, and they have no concept of what the role is. And then the lack of resources. They expect a new chief innovation officer to come in and make magic happen and deliver major impact, major changes all within two years, which is totally unrealistic. So 
There tends to be a lack of resources, primarily time, but also people and money. The other is, is there's an absence of clear, stable objectives. If you're looking to go into a CINO role and the CEO, who you would be reporting to, hopefully, cannot give you clear objectives and a clear understanding for what the role's purpose is in their organization, be very skeptical. Drill, drill, drill. Make sure you understand their expectations, but also use it as an opportunity to educate them about how you see the role and how it either aligns or where it needs to change to align. And then you've got organizational resistance. A chief innovation officer is all about change. How are you going to change the organization? How are you going to change the role? What does that mean? And so therefore, many organizations talk that they they're, understand that change is important, but they're very resilient. And then last but not least, and probably the one that causes the biggest issues, is lack of culture or a culture mismatch. I'm amazed at how many organizations have no defined culture or the culture is toxic in some cases. And so we'll talk a little bit more later here about the importance and the role of having a culture that supports innovation. So what are the, some of the key criteria or strategies for success in a CINO role? First up, and probably one of the most important, is setting clear, aligned goals with the strategic vision for the organization. Clear and aligned. How do you get that? Well, you do one-on-ones with all your key stakeholders, all your C-level peers, all your internal influencers, etc. And in fact, in my case, when I was being um, recruited to become the CEO at Cable Labs, um, and there were seven CEOs who make up of the uh, 21 board members, which are all CEOs, seven of them were on the search committee to select the new CEO. My requirement was is I wanted one eight-hour day with every CEO on the search committee, all seven. Because what they were looking for, I was not convinced that they understand how hard the role is, how long it's going to take, and the patience and support that was going to be expected from them. And I flew around the country, Atlanta, St. Louis, Philadelphia, um, Hartford, Connecticut, um, all over. And I spent an entire eight-hour day with CEOs running billion-dollar businesses, just having an innovation discussion with them. One, to get so they got to know me, but two, that I conveyed to them how hard it was going to be and that both of us were convinced that it was a match. Because if it wasn't, fine, I would go off and go back to my retirement and they could continue the search for somebody. But it, it took five months to complete that and complete all the discussions before I agreed to take the CEO role. And it was that effort and that alignment around the strategic vision for the organization that is what set up the foundation for the success that we've had. Now, assuming you can set clear to line goals with the strategic vision, next is develop a roadmap to guide the innovation efforts. Get alignment with your C-level peers on what is that um, strategic vision, and then how do you guide the innovation efforts to support the strategic vision? Not near-term, here and now products, but that longer range. What is it? Are you going to focus on two to four years, three to eight years, five plus years? Whatever that is, define that roadmap so that people can align to it, they can see that you're aligned to what their efforts are, and that it's mutually beneficial. Now, we talked a little bit before about fostering a culture of innovation and how important it is. 
It is critical. Now, I've talked in previous episodes about the culture of innovation. You need to go back and check on those to make sure you understand the details. I'm not going to get into digging deep, but the basics are you need to create a nurturing environment that values creativity, that values people bringing their creativity to work, not just people on your innovation team, but throughout the organization. You need to encourage risk-taking and experimentation. You need to encourage people to take risks. And if it fails, great. That's a learning experience. Success, thumbs up, great. You need to encourage risk-taking. And then you, as the CINO, you need to act as cultural architect for your organization. If your culture is not there today when you're stepping into the role, then you need to infuse it. You need to adjust and adapt the culture to support the innovation effort. Now, one point that I cannot underemphasize if you're taking a, an innovation leadership role is the importance of effective communication. You need to be able to articulate your vision clearly and persuasively to all levels within the organization, from the line workers, through your management team, to your C-level, to your board of directors, to your owners, shareholders, etc., to the general external. You will become the face of innovation, and you need to be well-skilled in your communication skills. You need to build stakeholder buy-in for your agenda. And you need to do that through your communication. you got to be convincing, persuasive, an influencer within your peers and across your organization. If you're just going to sit back and expect that you've been blessed and that people are going to follow, it will not happen. You have to communicate. And then through that communication and through your own efforts and you effectively being the innovation evangelist, You need to strengthen that organizational support through those relationships. Teams that don't even report to you, organizations that are outside maybe even your scope, you need to strengthen those relationships. In my case at HP, over my tenure there, I averaged between 35 and 40 weeks a year on the road. That's right, 35 to 40 weeks a year on the road, building those relationships. And these are not relationships that you can just build through a Zoom call. You need to put your butt in the the airplane and you need to go build those relationships. Now, ultimately, though, what's going to determine your tenure is your ability to be adaptable and your resiliency. You need to stay agile. It's a constantly changing business environment. Their CEO brought you in or is appointing you into this role or you already are in this role because of the changing business environment and they need some kind of a catalyst or change agent. Guess what? That's you. And you need to be willing to pivot your innovation strategies while simultaneously maintaining focus, maintaining the focus in the right priorities and in the right areas. So you have to be be able to pivot and not thrash the organization. And then ultimately, you got to think about it in the context of your own personal goals, right? Look, the CINO role is a high-risk role. You have the risk for high turnover. When I stepped into my CIO role back at Telegit, Back in 1996, when, which, was a public, which was going to become a publicly traded company, right? The average tenure for a CIO at that time was 18 months. CIOs just churned like crazy. Um, and I was in that role six years. I was in effectively the CINO role for HP for 10 years. I've been in my CEO role now for uh, coming up on 13 years. So, um, resiliency. 
thick skin. Your own personal goals, not the short term. But where do you see your career in 10 years and in 15 years? And recognize that when you step into this role, you are making a long-term commitment to this organization and for its success. So keep that in mind. Reflect on it. Keep your personal priorities and objectives and goals um, front and center so you can make sure you stay aligned. But understand you're committing and you should be thinking about committing for a minimum of five, and if not 10 years, because that's how long innovation will take to have the impact on an organization and for you to ring the bell and achieve your success. So as I wrap this up, look, success hinges on dedication and your ability to have strategic foresight in how innovation can impact your organization. The other key here that I would give you as advice is make your role more about the team than me, meaning yourself. It's not about you. It's not about your success. It's not about, it's about team. Innovation is a team sport. Be humble. It's not about you. And in fact, when I became CEO at Cable Labs, I made it quite clear that if they were hiring me because of my title and being able to dance me around because of what I achieved at HP, go find somebody else, I was not interested. It is about the team. And key here is you're stepping into a role. You will influence then chief innovation officers, the CINOs that come in behind you, right? Your tenure will determine the lasting legacy of innovation in your organization, in your industry, and in the innovation space as a whole. Yes, even your little role can influence just the role of CINOs globally. So go in with your eyes wide open, understand where you and your skills match, and knock it out of the park. Don't don't give up. Understand all of these things I talked about, but go out there, be successful, become the model for what a successful CINO role looks like that others can draft off of. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Make sure you subscribe, interested in your thoughts and comments on these kinds of episodes, um, helping people understand if you want to get into an innovation career, what does it take? Uh, you can post your comments below. Also, subscribe to the newsletter. We, we do a weekly newsletter um, that's made up of articles and things written by me, written by others um, in technology and innovation space. Um, it comes out weekly in your, in your mailbox. It's a great way to stay up to date, but also follow on social media. So with that, we're going to wrap this up. Again, hit that subscribe button. Hit, hit that bell. So that way that you get notified as we post new episodes. Have a great week. We are starting to get back onto a weekly schedule. So stay tuned. News episodes will be coming, particularly as we continue to build out. I do apologize for my voice. It's because of my allergies. Thus why some of the work that we're doing here in the studio. And hopefully it'll clear that up. With that, thanks everybody. We'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.